We're here with Yair Rodriguez. Yair, we're back at the scene of the crime, UFC 211, where it last went down, where we last saw you in action. Uh, the fight against Frankie Edgar, man. I, I know that's that's the one. Everybody, again, last saw you in action. But when you think back to that fight, what's what's the biggest takeaway from that fight? Um, I think it's a lot of takes away from that fight. You know, I learned a, a lot from that experience. But one of the things is that um, you that you cannot get on focus. You know, you cannot get on focus. You gotta, you gotta keep true to yourself, believe in yourself. You gotta keep doing the right things, and everything else will be there. You know, I think it's something that I lost. There, I was really, um, I wasn't there. You know, I wasn't mentally there. I think that's one of the biggest. That was my biggest problem. You know, and uh, of course, some some issues with uh, the strategy. But now, um, um, looking back to the fight, you know, I know what I have to work on, and I think it's what I've been doing. So I feel, I feel good. Did you think, you know, a lot of people were saying after the fight and even before the fight that that may have been too big of a step up for you at the time? Do you agree with that or do you disagree? Or do you think, you know, you were truly capable of taking out Frankie had you, you know, approached it a different way? Of course, like, um, as I said before, my, of course, this didn't happen, right? But my goal was going, fight, uh, fighting Frankie Edgar, winning, of course, against him and go for the belt. You know, that was my original plan. Now, it's going to take a little longer. But I'm still on my way to be the champion of the world. It's what I believe, it's what I stick to my beliefs, and uh, I think it's what I want to achieve. So it doesn't really matter you know, how many times I lost you know, during the process. Uh, like Nico was saying earlier, you gotta enjoy the process. You know, it's what you have to learn how to enjoy the process. Whenever you have it, you already have it. You know, you, so we, we, I have heard some, some champions say, okay, I already have the belt. Like, I have defended five times. I don't know how many times. What else? You know, I think <clears throat> I think you gotta keep your ambitions forward. You know, so you, you can always push forward. It doesn't matter if you have already what you think one time to achieve, but you gotta always set goals forward. It doesn't matter if you already achieve a goal. You know, it's bigger goals in life than just one thing. That's what I think. Absolutely, absolutely. And I, I guess a lot of the, the biggest takeaway from the from the fans and the, you know the the critics and everything was was the wrestling. All right now, I see you've been working with Izzy mm -hmm. a little bit. So, what's it been like working working with him? Uh, it's always amazing. It's always great to train with Izzy. You know, it's always hard training with him. He knows, uh, especially for this fight, you know, that is coming. Uh, he knows a lot about Dagestan wrestling, Russian wrestling. Mm -hmm. He's been working with some of them before. So, I'm taking to his advantage and uh, I'm using it. And that's that's a, one of the things that a lot of people are excited about this fight. You guys both have a lot of flashy techniques when it comes to the striking. And, uh, you know, he also has the wrestling thing there, too. So um, how do you see, you know, the matchup between him? Because, again, like striking wise, I, I believe you guys are both in the same realm. But a lot of people would think that, you know, he's got a little bit better, more of a wrestling advantage and that he would probably plan to use that in the fight. So cool. I'm ready for it. <laughs> You're ready for it. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So, again, working with Izzy and, uh, and um, you know, learn, taking, taking that uh, the wrestling part of it and implementing it into this game. I know you've been training in a lot of different places, so is there anywhere else that you've been stopping along the way that has kind of stood out in your preparation for this fight? Well, we were just in Jackson's this all last week, 10 days probably, mm -hmm. you know? Now we're on our way to Chicago to train with, the, with at, Reese, at EC's wrestling, wrestling school, I'm sorry. And I'm gonna be training with Anthony Perez for a bit, Sergio Perez, we're going up to, to Wisconsin too for a couple of weeks. Uh, take different looks, you know, and I think we're going back to Albuquerque after those two weeks to keep on training. So I'm going to be doing some kind of cross training here and there, you know. Okay, very cool. Now, a lot was made about, you know, the whole situation and the miscommunication where you were dropped from the <laughs> roster for a short period of time yeah. and then you get added back on once the communication was cleared up. So how frustrating was that, going through that whole process? Well, you know, I, was, I wasn't really frustrated, you know, because I knew that I wasn't doing nothing you know, so I was like, okay, this is what happens, you know, this sport is business, <coughs> and I didn't take it personal with nobody, you know, this is just business, is the way that it, it sometimes it happened that way, you know, but I'm glad that we, we could clear all of the misunderstandings and now I'm back into the UFC. Very cool. And is it kind of like, uh, does it seem kind of weird though, it would, uh, from the outside looking in, that there wouldn't be a, like a direct line of communication already there to kind of clear these kind of things up. I, I remember reading you had to go through a friend of a friend to meet with Sean Shelby, and then you guys met, so. Yeah, so I was in Mexico City and I met with my friend Mario Delgado, he lives in there, I always see him. So we were talking and he told me like, oh, what happened? So I told him my part of my story. Uh, he was like, okay, uh, I talked to Sean Shelby and I think uh, you guys have to talk. 
will, will you be okay if I set up a meeting between you guys? Like, I'm okay. You know, I don't have any problem against Sean Shelby or Dana White or the UFC. Not at all. You know, they hit me up and I appreciate that. You know, I, just need, I would like to, to know what okay. was on their mind, what happened, you know, just theoretically. So we sit up, um, have a lunch, we eat sushi, and then <laughs> uh, we talk and we, we go clear up, clear up what it was happening, you know. Very cool. Is there more communication now? More communication. <laughs> yeah. That's cool. That's cool. So um, I, I've also seen you've been training a little bit at the PI as well. So well, what's that I've, been, like? I've been living, I moved to Vegas, but I haven't okay. really been in the Performance Institute. Okay. You know, I've been there just hitting bags or something like that, but not okay. really training. Um, but, but it's because I don't have a team yet set up, you know, I'm, I'm just with easy. And, you know, I like to move around, have different looks. You know, that's why I don't have a, a permanent gym, you know, but um, I'm looking for one probably. Okay. And now that, now that everything's cleared up, you know, with, with the EOC, and like, like you said, the communication's good now and everything, um, what's the kind of pace of entering the octagon that you want to keep? How many times do you want to get in? Do you want to get in again before the year's out? I think so. You know, it's up to go, uh, it's up to go the fight, the fight uh, goes. You know, sometimes you're pretty beat up after a fight, yeah. you know, you your elbows, knuckles, or whatever, you know, it's a fight, it's like being an act car accident every time that you step in, in there, you know, unless the fight uh, finishes soon, you know, but I'm trying to fight twice before the year ends. Okay, cool. And, and fighting in Dallas, I mean, like I said last time, this is where you last fought. What was it like, you know, from the fan perspective? I mean, because this is close to where you've had majority of your fights in your, in your career. So, I mean, do you feel like you kind of have like a hometown advantage against the guy coming in, you know, the Russian guy coming in? Do you think you'll have that, the crowd on your side and all that stuff? Yeah, I think the crowd's gonna be on my side. I'm not saying that it doesn't matter, you know, but whenever you're stepping into that cage, nothing else should matter. You know, that's what I think. Of course, of course, I appreciate the support of people because you, you can hear them, of course, you know, you can hear them, you can feel the energy, you know, and you can push whenever they are cheering for you. But you gotta be able to, whenever they are not on your side, block that and keep on going, you know. I've been, I think, both sides, and I'm, I'm not scared of it, you know, so it's just a fight, so. I gotta fight. <laughs> <laughs> for sure. And what do you think a win over Zabit does for you? Uh, well, I think I think he's a pretty round, pretty well rounded guy. You know, um, I don't know where a fight against Zabit is gonna put me. I don't know what even. I don't. I don't even know where I'm ranked right now. I'm Currently fourteenth, and he's ranked fifteenth, I believe. I'm. You know, I don't really know where it's gonna put me, but I think it's gonna it's gonna be a really a really interesting fight to see. It's gonna prove me. You know, because he has a lot of skills. So. More than anything, where it's gonna put me on the ranks, I think for me it's gonna be a great fight uh, to get to grab experience. Okay. And how do you see it playing out? What? How do you see it playing out? Who I see it? Yeah. How do you see, oh. you, how do you see yourself getting your hand raised on on a well, September eighth? Um, I don't know. It can be any any way. You know, if any anywhere the fight goes, I'll be ready for it. So, I mean, he's dangerous everywhere. I, I'm sure I'm dangerous everywhere too. So, you know, in a fight like that, you never know who it can cause. You know, he's a pretty good striker, he's a pretty good wrestler, he has submissions, so it's gonna be a scrap. It's gonna be more of a who sees the opportunity and grabs it like that, I think. Very cool. Best of luck, September 8th, man. I look forward to it. Appreciate that.